takes its toll throughout the years. And we know consolation and my Jesus is gonna wipe away all tears. We may have, we may have hours of confusion.
Studies Lectureship. On behalf of Dr. Lloyd Harris, President of the School of Religious Studies, we welcome you to the afternoon portion of this devotional presentation. Uh, Brother Harris and I agreed uh, to do something new this year, and this uh, new nuance is adding morning and afternoon devotions uh, around the prophet Jeremiah and the book of Lamentations. Our theme is actually life lessons from the book of Lamentations. So uh, all of the subjects will either come from the pen of the book of Jeremiah or from the book of Lamentations. I'm happy to introduce our speaker this afternoon, Brother Kenneth Spence. Since September of 2015, uh, Brother Spence has served as minister and evangelist to the Camden Church of Christ in Camden, New Jersey. Brother Spence was born in 1983, raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was reared at the 63rd and Vine Street Church of Christ uh, in Philadelphia. He preached his first sermon at age 13 and has been preaching ever since. Our brother Spence is married to Dominique. Uh, they've been married since November 2012 and they have one son named Nathaniel. Brother Spence is currently matriculating uh, Master of Divinity candidate in ministerial leadership at Amridge University as well as pursuing a Master of Arts in uh, Biblical Exegesis at Liberty University. Uh, Brother Spence is a young, young man, a young preacher. Uh, he has preached and taught at various uh, workshops, revivals, and gospel meetings in Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, the District of Columbia. There's a lot of things that we could say. I don't want to take much of his time, uh, but we're happy that Brother Spence is participating uh, this year. We're going to present him in just a moment. Before we do, I, I want to ask if you will help make this lectureship a success. Those who are watching on social media, uh, by Facebook or YouTube, if you will like and share. Will you do us a favor, like and share uh, this, this lectureship? It will help us tremendously. I, I want to thank Brother Spence for uh, agreeing to participate, and we look forward to hearing what he has to say. May God bless you, and may God bless you real good. Amen. Well, certainly it is indeed a blessing uh, to be present with you, to be uh, present, to be able to share just a portion from the word of God. Certainly, uh, Brother Crusoe, I appreciate the uh, introduction um, and certainly thankful for the invite to speak uh, here at the School of Religious Studies lectureship, uh, not just from uh, Dr. Crusoe, but also from Dr. Lloyd Harris, um, as both have been monumental in the brotherhood. Uh, for a number of years. Um, my, my text and my uh, assigned topic, if you will, comes from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. Um, and my theme, if you will, is a disgruntled employee. So if you don't mind, let's examine the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. This is coming from the uh, New American Standard Bible, uh, 95. Uh, where the scripture says quite plainly, O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. 
You have overcome me and prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For each time I speak, I cry aloud. I proclaim violence and destruction because for me, the word of the Lord has resulted in reproach and derision all day long. But if I say, I will not remember him or speak any more in his name, then in my heart, it becomes like a burning fire shut up in my bones and I am weary of holding it in and I cannot endure it. Amen. Jeremiah here in the text uh, begins to write uh, in a Hebrew, Hebrew poetic form, um, sharing the beginnings of a, of a complaint. Um, while noted in, in that musical uh, Hebrew poetry, uh, this right here is him sharing his complaint, his complaint against the Lord. Oh, Lord, sometimes, and if we're honest, sometimes uh, we might find ourselves angry or frustrated um, and feel like we can't go to the Lord in that frustration, that anguish, that anxiety. Uh, here we got an example of it. But uh, Jeremiah is not viewed favorably amongst the people of Judah. Jeremiah has a purpose in sharing the word and doing what God told him to do, but it seems that ridicule, persecution, and threats are a normal course of the day for him. And now after some time, Jeremiah, let's call him Jerry for short, uh, Jerry uh, uh, is frustrated and, and after some time he's tired of it and he starts to write this psalm related to his displeasure. Well, the problem at hand that we can see as we look at this and, and we look at verses seven and eight before this portion in the text, after this portion in the text, Jeremiah is just getting hit after hit, after hit, after hit, after hit from the people who don't like what he's saying, who don't like the fact that he's proclaiming what God said he would do, who don't like the fact that after uh, false prophets even sharing that, oh, well, God's going to bless us and we're going to be fine. He's sharing a message that seems to be that of gloom and doom. Well, the problem we have right here is he's not getting what he expected. What you mean by that, preacher? He thought he knew what success looked like. And if we're honest in that endeavor, many of us in our various walks in life, in our occupations, even in ministry, we might have an idea what we think success should look like, but uh, we might be going through a season or, or in an enduring season, a very long season where it looks nothing like we thought it was going to look like. It didn't look like to him pain and anxiety and frustration and, and all of the, 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 the enduring times that he had to deal with. He didn't think it would look like that for to come up and say, Lord, you fooled me. Lord, you, you, you deceived me. And, and indeed, I was deceived for, for him to share and to suggest that it's to say he feels like he was being led one way and he's led a completely different other way. But at the same time, he couldn't stop doing it because it was a part of him. It was like fire, as many of us have quoted many times, fire shut up in his bones. It's one of those things where it, it, it gives you the idea that if he tried to hold it in, it would, just, it, it would just overwhelm him. Weary from holding it in, he had to let it out. It's quite interesting because while we have the technology to, to look at at bone density and bone strength and every part of the bone and bone marrow, that which is inside and, 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 and bone marrow really has its purpose, right? It, 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 it helps to strengthen the bone. It helps to repair the bone, especially in times where there's a breakage. It also helps in the supply of red and white blood cells to the body. So there's a, a purpose, but, but dare I say, maybe, maybe there's a chance that back then they even understood that there was something in the bone. Maybe there was an understanding that when they eat, and maybe you're from the same place that I'm from in the respect that folk would eat chicken. Amen, somebody. Folk would eat chicken and then they break open the bone and they suck out the marrow from the inside of the bone that, that inside it was just the best part. And sometimes if, 
if, if you had a knife sharp enough, you could cut a bone. I'm talking about steak now. You could cut a bone and, and you would cook the inside so well that the marrow would just slide right on out. It'd be just delicious and scrumptious. Some of y'all are hungry and it's almost lunchtime. I don't want to mess you up. But it's in this that we kind of get an idea that that marrow inside the bone plays an important part for the support or the operation of the individual. And dare I say, if God's word is is like fire in our bones, that means that he gives strength to who we are. He gives strength to our daily operation. He gives strength. His word even gives strength to to what we do and how we do. Let Let me share this before I forget this here point or leave this point alone, is that God puts something in each of us that has to come out. And while we could try and, and cover it up and hide it and, and, and put stuff to, to block it, 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 it has to come out. We don't sit well if what God put in us doesn't come out. Dare I say, not just to the preacher, but to the church. God has put something in you. God has put purpose in you. God has purposed you for something in this day and age. And sometimes when everything that surrounds us does not surrounds us does not look like the success that we expect, take courage. Take rest in knowing that you simply doing what God has you, God has purposed you to do is good enough for him. Jeremiah is a book that indeed I love. And growing up, I I, I found myself falling in love with every part of it simply because of one thing. Jeremiah's ministry doesn't look like success at all. Jeremiah at a later point is locked in socks and, and at certain points he spit on, at some point he slapped, at some point he's abused, at some point he's thrown to the side. It doesn't look like a successful ministry, but if I could bring you back to chapter one, just to see something, chapter one, verse five, and following where the scripture says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. I consecrated you. I separated you. I purposed you for a particular work. Then I said, Lord, I, behold, I don't know how to speak. I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Which means success is not a result. We got a clash of success here. It's not a result of what we expect that we do, but success as God would see it is simply doing what he purposed us to do. Y'all ain't heard me. Success is not the end result. It's not, if we talk in the preachers now, it's not the ministerial anniversaries. It's not the four, 5,000 member congregation. It's not just, it's simply doing what God said to do because God has his purpose for us even further than we can see. When I was younger, as I go ahead and I get ready to close, when I was younger, um, some Brother Crusoe shared that I didn't think he was going to share, was uh, uh, I was baptized at, at 12 and then at 13, I preached my first sermon. That was uh, 1996, April of 1996 that I preached my first sermon. It was part of the nursing home ministry and preached a bunch of sermons at the nursing home over time. And the first time I got to share a sermon in front of the church was June of 1997. And I remember sharing that sermon and my father was in the hospital. And I remember I went after, I said, daddy, I preached. My father was a preacher. And so what I considered success was that my father would be there to see me one day and be like, oh, that's my boy. He, he certainly can say a good word. And three months after I preached in 1997, he died. And when he died, what I viewed as success was my father sitting on the front pew or sitting somewhere in the church and saying, I'm proud of my boy. I knew he was going to do something great. My boy is something else. And that's what I viewed as success. So when he died, I put it down and said, I didn't want any part of this anymore. Because if he wasn't there, but can I tell you something? God put something in me to bring about his word. And in the same way, <laughs> now I'm in minister is in church. But in the same way, God has put something in you. God has placed a purpose in you. And certainly the success is not the accolades. Oh, that's nice. That's a bonus. But what God has put in you, let it out. 
All of us should have the mindset to die empty that everything God put in us, we ought to pour it out in honor of him. He purposed us to get something done. We ought to pour that out because success for the Lord is different from how we view success. So I share with you, don't be a disgruntled employee. Simply be a humble servant willing to pour out all that God put in you. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that this word is giving you something to chew on, something to think on, something truly to meditate on uh, today and even later on during this week, that it be a blessing to you. God bless you. God keep you. There are some days.